Well, the People's Democratic Party PDP Governors Forum on Tuesday pleaded with the National Assembly to rescue Nigeria's democracy by passing the necessary amendments to the Electoral Act. Specifically, the forum urged the lawmakers to rise above partisan politics to pass the amendment to allow for the electronic transfer of election results. Well, joining us to discuss this is communications analyst Ihe Chuku Ibeji and the national chairman of PANDEF, Mr. Emmanuel Iboisin. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much. Good evening, viewers. All right. Thank you very much. But my name is Senator Emmanuel Iboisin. Senator. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so so I, I, I'm definitely starting with you, Senator, because this is your, this is, these are your colleagues, or your former colleagues. Um, we know the row that Nigerians had over the issue of the um, electronic transmission of results in uh, the Electoral Act, uh, the one that is being amended as we speak. And we hoped that the National Assembly would change or retrace you know, its steps on that particular issue. But here we are again. The National Assembly is resuming. Um, several billions have been um, um, put in place, actually, uh, to be given to Mr. President because he has asked for it. And, of course, the National Assembly is supposed to um, okay it for Mr. President. And, and that's fine. Borrowing is part of the system. But the most important thing, which is 2023, where, which every Nigerian is most interested in, and making sure that we have free, fair, and credible elections, is on the table. What direction do you see the National Assembly going on this particular issue? Uh, good evening, listeners. Uh, having been a leader in the National Assembly, uh, a former deputy chief whip in the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, the process of lawmaking is sometimes cumbersome. And uh, uh, it is as usual for the legislators to concentrate and be focused, especially and, and avoid partisan politics when uh, law is going to be made. Uh, in terms of the Electoral Act that was amended, it's, it's like some party wanted the act to favor them. And because they have majority in the National Assembly, they, they tend to go in the direction which would aid them to rig election. They are afraid of electronic voting and electronic transmission of results. When you, when you say a certain party, I, I mean, the National Assembly is made up of both the APC and the PDP. Uh, and whether we like it or not, a, a lot more of the people in the opposition also okayed um, the removal of that particular part of the, the act. So is this really a, a, a party thing or is just a politician's perspective? It's, it's, because it's more, it's more, it was more of a party thing because uh, uh, the PDP is confident that with electronic voting and electronic transmission of results that every individual's vote will count and we are confident in PDP that PDP will win under a very free and fair election. Again. So, again. Yes. Whether the PDP, PDP is confident or again. not, we did not yes. see that confidence. We did not see that fight. We did not see that push when it came to this particular issue. It seemed like, I mean, I'm wondering, as a politician, if it's going to benefit you that the results are not transmitted live at the polling unit, why would you want to push for it? And, this is, something, PDP, and this is something that both the APC and the PDP has benefited from in the past. No, 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 but, but you, you would have noticed that uh, almost all the PDP uh, members in the National Assembly supported electronic voting. 
because they are confident that with electronic voting, they will make it back to the National Assembly. Uh, uh, you see, when you are not transmitting uh, e election results electronically, the chances are that you just go and uh, manipulate the results of the elections at the units. But if it is transmitted right at the units to the collision center, the chances are that it's almost zero that you cannot manipulate. Okay. Look at what was happening in IDPs. They just announce whatever they, they feel like announcing without people voting. So it is only through electronic voting and electronic transmission of result that we, the PDP, can be confident in the system and democracy can be sustained. Okay, so I take it that you're speaking for the PDP, but let me go to uh, Ibechi. Um, Ibechi, it's interesting that we see uh, a dynamic in the National Assembly, and, and this is the, the subject of my argument and my push um, for the second speaker. But you're obviously not a politician. You're the average Nigerian. You're the one who wants to go to the polling unit and make sure that your vote counts. I always like to make reference to the fact that we've seen a, a, a serious decline in the number of people who are interested in not just voting, but also even registering. There's, there's been a re-registering process, re-registration process going on um, online with INEC. And we also are seeing that there's a decline. Look at what happened during the local government elections here in Lagos State. We barely saw anybody. Uh, and we also know that, I've heard a lot of Nigerians say that if we have this form of um, a result transmission, we probably have more confidence in the electoral process. But now that the National Assembly is reconvening, what are we supposed to do to continue to pressure them to bring back this to the table and reconsider? Okay, so um, thank you very much. Um, I think that originally, before the, the bill, when the committee that looked at the bill um, had looked had made those amendments where it um, where it uh, suggested the Senate uh, the Senate committee uh, had looked at the the amendment of that bill, where it suggested that um, it could only um, approve for electronic voting based on um, the National uh, Nigerian Communications Commission's ability to, um, of course, uh, uh, approve that there's coverage, enough coverage, and the National Assembly's approval. Um, when, that, when that thing had come out, there was a lot of pressure from, from um, different uh, human rights uh, organizations, so much so that when they reconvened, I recall that the Senate president had complained about um, when he was receiving the Electoral Act Amendment, he had complained about what he had called calculated blackmail against the leadership of the National Assembly by mischief makers. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> that on one part should clearly not um, take away the power of the people to speak in this kind of matters. Now, coming right down to, to um, them voting along different party lines, I recall also that I think um, it was, um, I think, 28, was it 28? 28 uh, senators to 53 who voted that those amendments should start or, or they're about. Now, what it speaks to me, in essence, is, if I find clearly, is that um, um, it was not exactly along party lines, so to speak, but it was more or less along the lines that favored them, along the lines that spoke to, um, spoke to what it would be, as in, um, it would be, if, if the way the way the way it works is that I mean, if the election votes have been counted and then they are electronically transmitted, it goes along to extinguish rigging. If you recall, even during the Edo state elections, the INEC came up with a new innovation where there was the viewing um, viewing panel or viewing center where people could see the, the results that as they were being transmitted, and you know it helped the elections a lot. So these are the things, the advantages that we speak about in um, this uh, kind of scenario. Electronic, um, uh, electronic transmission of results in every way possible should be left smack in the hands and decision of INEC. 
And that's one of the things that, um, that um, of course, makes INEC independent. But INEC has I also come out, Ibechi, to say, we can do this. We do not even understand why we have to report to the NCC. I have had INEC officials on this show over and over again, retrating and restating that they can do it. They have displayed that they have been able to do it in different places in this country, and they're very certain that it can work. So we all go back to the National Assembly and ask why. So even though the National Assembly is not answering us, my question is, and you have not really answered me, how yes. do we pressure okay. them to bring back to this them. issue to the table? Because we can't just keep jaw jawing about it and not making moves. The PDP, by this report, is doing a good job. But the human rights organizations, the, 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 the organizations who have always been pressuring them, need to continue to put that pressure so that they understand that our eyes are on them. And these are the pressures we're talking about. They need to pressure them from their representatives, those who are representing them, the people in their locality need to reach out to them and pressure them. They need to let them understand that, look, we are for transmission of electro electronic transmission of results because it will favor us, because it will make the elections free and fair to a large extent, because it will show the to show INEC as independent. And it's very, very important that we achieve this. The pressure must continue. And the pressure is something that is normal. You know, you lobby your senators, lobby your House of Red members to be on their toes to understand that this is the wish of the people. If you recall, as I said before, the people had, had lobbied them and pressured them earlier on um, for them not to have passed it in the first place. And that pressure has sustained it up to now. So what the PDP has done is to bring this to form. The what we need to do is for people, human rights organizations, individuals with the interest of, 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 of free and fair elections in, in, in their mode to continue to put those kind of subtle pressure on them to understand that this is the wish of the people and will guarantee a free and fair election in 2023. And that is just what it's going to be, basically. That is what I see um, and that should be. Yeah. Senator Ibogosi, uh, we also know that um, it, it would definitely benefit certain people if Nigerians get to that level of voter apathy that they no longer are interested and they resign to fate. Um, it would definitely benefit some people, plus the fact that the issue of uh, electronic transfer of results is still a debate of sorts. But as the PDP, because you seem to be speaking uh, as a member of the PDP, um, what will the PDP be pushing for? Yes, they're not the majority right now, but what will the PDP be pushing for? Because it looks like this might be a done deal. And, and looking at the, the body language of all our politicians, you included, sir, um, no matter how we scream and cry and kick in this country, politicians and government do whatever they want to do. What's the guarantee that this will take a different turn? Uh, like I said, the, the, the best for democracy is for electronic transmission of results. That will be the best for this country. Uh, and like my friend has said, it is not only the party that this is affecting. It also affects the electorate, the individual who wants to have a free and fair election. It affects him. And therefore, it is something that everybody must turn up. Our party is standing up already for it for the electronic transmission of results, the PDP. And I believe if, if every Nigerian stands up, because that's sometimes the language that government hears, that even members of the National Assembly will hear if everybody stands up on their right, because it is the right of the voter to make sure that his vote counts. Okay. And therefore, it is the responsibility of everybody. But as PDP, we are already standing up to make sure we push for electronic voting All right. as far as our party is concerned. All right, we have to go, unfortunately, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, Ihechiku Ibeji is a communications analyst, and uh, Senator Emmanuel Ibogosin is a national chairman of PANDA. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much. All right.
We will take a short break to see how Nigerians believe Nigeria's democracy can be saved. And when we come back, I'll be saying my goodbyes. I was talking about democracy in this country. Democracy does not exist in Nigeria anymore right now because, bro, a country that forgives bandits and terrorists, but they go after peaceful protesters and, you know, people fighting for their rights and everything. There's no democracy in Nigeria. I don't think Nigeria democracy can be saved. Like this, and currently I feel two things will save this country the way it is. Like, it's either separation or revolution because let's not let's not deceive ourselves 2023 another person that we don't want will still be there so what's the point let's just separate or let's let's get this country back well i think uh, for us to get it right uh, young people needs to participate in politics uh, we need to encourage uh, youths uh, particularly those be below the age of uh, 35 to uh, start uh, participating in politics partisan politics first and then uh, when they get uh, nominated as uh, representatives of these political parties, they can now be able to, you know, contest elections and win elections. We need younger people in the system. We need people that understand uh, uh, what globalization is about, industrialization is about, what uh, the issues they are in the country and uh, uh, how best to find solutions to them. Well, first and foremost, uh, our leaders should avoid uh, Godfatherism because the politics is a politics of uh, putting round, round pegs in square holes. That's one of the major problems. Everyone to, everybody wants his own brother, his own sister to be at the helms of affair. Definitely they, they, they pay their way into governance. Paying their way means you have to buy the electorate. Buying the electorate will, will, will not give you an edge over them. Whatever you are doing, nobody has uh, any, let's say, the ability to question what you are doing, whether you are right or wrong. The government does not have a say of the people into consideration. Well, we want to say thank you for being part of the conversation tonight. Tomorrow is another day. We'll be talking for development. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm.